Recently, we've been doing a lot of bond price problems using the big four formula, so to speak, for bond prices. Uh, that kind of thing is going to continue in this video and a few more videos to come with a focus on deciding which formula to use in a given situation, which formula might be best. I'm going to start by illustrating this for problem 7.9 in the second edition of Kellison. We'll be finding the purchase price of a bond. With a couple formulas, we're going to compare the efficiency of the two calculations. It's not stated in the problem statement itself that you should use two formulas, but I will want to do that here to illustrate it. Here's the problem. We've got a $1,000 bond. This is the face or par value of the bond. It's got a coupon rate of 9% payable semi-annually. So R is going to be 0 0.045. It's redeemable after an unspecified number of years. So N here, the number of coupon payments is going to be unknown. Though the redemption value is known, $1,125. That is going to be the value of C. The bond is bought to yield 10% convertible semi-annually. So J, the yield rate, or I if you prefer, would be 0 0.05. If the present value, or rede the redemption value, is 225 at this yield rate, find the purchase price P. So as is often the case, people's initial uh, thought or temptation is to go back to what they know. Usually the basic formula is what they know. And they, they will oftentimes want to avoid using other formulas. But I think it is good to practice using other formulas to think about when one might be more efficient than the other. And I think in this problem, since we are we happen to know the present value, the redemption value, and we don't know n, maybe Makem's formula would be best to use because we it's got the value of k in it. This is going to be k. Um, and we can calculate it without knowing it. Makem's formula will be the uh, first thing that we use, Makem's formula. It can be written as the price of the bond is K, the present value of the redemption value, plus G over J times C minus K in parentheses. Again, K is the present value of the redemption value. C is the redemption value itself. J is the effective semi-annual yield rate or the effective periodic yield rate. What was little g? Little g was the so-called modified coupon rate. C times little g equals f times r is the coupon amount. F is 1,000, r is 0 0.045, the coupon amount is $45. So we can find little g easily enough here. 45 divided by C, which is 45 divided by 1125. This comes out pretty nicely. 45 divided by 11.25 is 0 0.04. 4% is little g. That's the modified coupon rate. So we know everything we need to know to use this formula pretty quickly once we've figured out little g. So it's a pretty efficient use, a pretty efficient approach, I think. So k here again is 225. That's right there. Little g we've just found is 0 0.04. Little j was half of 10%, 5%, or 0 0.05. C was 11.25. K again is 225. I think we can do this all in our head here. 11.25 minus 225 is going to be 900. 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.05 is 0 0.8. 0 0.8 times 900 is 720. We get 225 plus 720 dollars. That'll be 900 and $45, and that is the correct purchase price. That was pretty efficient. The only little thing we had to do was calculate little g, but you do need to remember Makem's formula if you use this way. All right, what about the basic formula? Is it just as efficient or less so? I think it is a little less efficient, we will see. Basic formula is that the price is F times R times A N j plus c times v sub j to the n power. We don't know n. We do know v. Are we going to need to solve for n? We actually can avoid solving for n, but it still is going to be a little bit more complicated than Makem's formula. f times r was 45, so we get 45. We have 1 minus vj. j I can, is 0 0.05. I can put that in here if I like. So vj to the n divided by j, which is 0 0.05. 
plus this thing. This is the value of k, so I can go ahead and replace this with 225 if I want. But I still am going to need to figure out either n or v to the n to help me finish this calculation. You actually can just solve for v to the n. You don't need to solve for n. You don't need to use logarithms here. We do know that k is cvj to the n. We know that k is 225 and c is 1125. So we can solve this for vj to the n. v sub 0 0.05 to the n is going to be 225 divided by 1125. And this turns out pretty nice as well. I believe, I believe it's 0 0.2. 225 divided by 1125 is 0.2. There you go. Sorry about that. Plug that in up here. So we get 45 times 1 minus 0.2 is 0.8 divided by 0 0.05, this will be 16. And 220, uh, 45 times 16 should be 720. Let's just double check that quick. 45 times 16 is 720. You do get the same answer, 945 for the price. Okay, not too bad, but we did have to do a, perhaps a little bit more work in solving for v to the n, and if you weren't thinking clearly enough, you might take the time to solve for n using logarithms, but you don't need to. You'll get the same answer, 945, um, but I think Makeham's formula is a little bit quicker.